This video is about glycolysis and this is a very very quick review so let's get right into it. So from glucose we have glucose 6-phosphate and the enzyme we are using is either hexokinase or glucokinase. Glucokinase in the liver because it says gluco there's an L there and hexokinase is everywhere else. Glucokinase has very very high KM but low affinity but hexokinase has low KM and high affinity. What does that really mean? It means that you need lots of sugar to stimulate the glucokinase that is in the liver. That's why it has high KM. But you don't need that much sugar in the other tissues where we, where you, we are using hexokinase to do glycolysis or to start the process of glycolysis. From glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, we're using one molecule of ATP, turning ATP to ADP. We're also using magnesium as the ion. Okay, So that's the first step. Moving on to the next step, glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate is achieved by the enzyme isomerase. Glucose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate are isomers of each other. Therefore, they are in equilibrium, so they can go back and forth. This is just shuffling the hydroxyl group from one position to the other. Now we have fructose 6-phosphate being converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. And this enzyme, the enzyme that is required here is PFK1. Now, fructose 6-phosphate can either go to form fructose 1,6-bisphosphate or it can also form fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. And this enzyme is going to be PFK2. Fructose 6-phosphate getting converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate using uses 1 ATP converting to ADP. So 1 ATP is being converted to ADP and the same thing is happening here. It's also using 1 ATP been converted to ADP. This PFK1 is also the rate limiting enzyme. What is a rate limiting enzyme? It means it has the slowest step. When we draw a rate limiting enzyme, we're supposed to get a sigmoidal curve. That's what happens. Whenever we draw a rate limiting enzyme, it always ends up being a sigmoidal curve. And this is also the slowest step in the entire glycolytic pathway. Now the formation of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, the reason it happens is because when there is so much sugar trickling down the system, the, the system gets, or the glycolytic pathway gets overloaded. So it kind of holds off as fructose 2,6-bisphosphate before it can channel all its, uh, all its uh, products to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. When there's a significant amount of increase in fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, when it increases significantly, this has an allosteric effect on this pathway. So it stimulates this PFK1 making more and more fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. The enzymes that uh, stimulates PFK2 is going to be insulin and the one that inhibits is going to be glucagon. Don't get confused with the fact that PFK1 is stimulated by insulin or inhibited by glucagon. No, it's only going to be PFK2 which is going to be stimulated by insulin inhibited by glucagon. So those are, were the regulators for PFK2. For PFK1, the regulators are citrate, which is going to have a negative effect on PFK1, ATP, which is going to have a negative effect on PFK1, AMP is going to have a positive effect on PFK1, and fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, so this product right here, is going to also have a positive effect, and this was allosteric, allosteric effect on PFK1. So those were the reg regulators for PFK1. Now moving on to the next page, from fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, we're going to use an enzyme aldolase, which is going to give us three molecules, two molecules of three carbons. Uh, so fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, phosphate had six carbons, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate has three carbons, dihydroxy acetone phosphate has three carbons. So the six carbon split into three and three, uh, making glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and DHAP. And this is achieved by the enzyme aldolase. Glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate are isomers of DHAP, so they do interchange among each other constantly. And this isomerization is achieved by the enzyme isomerase, just like glucose 6 phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate, we used isomerase. Now from glycerol dehydrate 3-phosphate, we are getting 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate. And the enzyme we are using here is glycerol dehydrate 3-phosphodehydrogenase. We're removing one of the hydrogen, and that hydrogen is becoming, converting NAD to NADH. Now this process also requires one inorganic phosphate and uses mercury as one of the metabolites. Now from 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate, we are making 3-phosphoglycerate using the enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase. 
This process is also making one ATP from one ADP. But do remember that there is two of these going on because there is two, these are one of the three carbon atoms, right? There is another one. So really we're making two ATPs then one ATP. Now one three BPG in red blood cells can be converted to two three BPG. And you know that two three BPG has, has greater affinity for oxygen when the hemoglobin has great affinity for hemoglobin when it is in deoxygenated state than in oxygenated state. So there is also that step going on right here. But moving on from 3-phosphoglycerate to 2-phosphoglycerate, that step is achieved by mutase. And from 2-phosphoglycerate to PEP or phosphoinositol pyruvate is achieved by enolase is also inhibit, inhibited by fluoride, which is found in a lot of paste. Uh, a lot of elderly people get fluoride poisoning, so they have addition of the enzyme enolase. So from PEP to pyruvate, this is achieved by the enzyme pyruvate kinase, which also makes another ATP from ADP. Again, I want to mention that this is two of these steps are going on simultaneously, so really we're making two ATP rather than one ATP. Now pyruvate kinase is inhibited by ATP, acetyl-CoA, alanine and glucagon and it's stimulated by fruct stimulated by fructose 1,6-bisphosphate which is right here it's stimulated by fructose 1,6-bisphosphate all the way to here and it's also stimulated by insulin so that was my quick review of glyco uh, glycolysis uh, that was under seven minutes so I think I did a good job I uh, hope you liked it see you in my next video